Well, good morning, everyone. Nice for stopping by. Just have a little bit of mail here that I received from a fellow homesteader. And I'm very excited about this because the weight of it, I knew what it was. I'm pretty good at guessing presents. And I do love my books. This one I had read while I was um, watching somebody's property and fell in love with it. it Rosemary Gladstar is the author of this and it's a beginner's guide to medicinal herbs and the way it's laid out is absolutely gorgeous with the pictures and you know how to make the tinctures right on the page for that particular herb and the uh, different things you can combine with it and it tells you the history on it and the you know the different uh, properties it has like if it has potassium or whatever in it uh, the parts that you use you know whether it's the root leaf flower seed you know which is all very important but the part as a retired nurse that I really appreciate is this well there's several parts this book is laid out like my textbooks from when I was in school and you can go through and your important parts are always in it's just a little tip in the on the sides in the in the color sections um, they didn't just do it for aesthetics it's also because they want to draw attention to what is very important and if you can only remember certain things on that page if your only takeaway on that page is in those few words because they really condense the wording down as well in summary if you were to write a test or an exam or to repeat it to somebody and if they ask you a question on why should I you know what uh, why should I take this what is it good for uh, what are contraindications um, safety factors uh, key constituents parts of you, you would be able to probably remember four or five of those things that are important and and then you just build on it but the book is so beautiful like for the elder areas they show like the the pictures of the flower which is very important with that one because of the umbrella like flowers um, but they have to be flat across the top, right and then what the berries look like absolutely gorgeous book I cannot recommend it enough and getting it as a gift <laughs> as a surprise because it was on my wish list even better now another parcel came in too which is amazing uh, very unexpected uh, it came highly recommended uh, actually by my sister uh, if you don't know who she is that's Cindy Squirrel off grid uh, you know go check out her videos uh, hit like subscribe follow uh, she has a wealth of knowledge that you know it's it's so, the depth of it is just amazing and she actively builds on it um, through research a lot of research which is really important when you're a forager when you're a gardener um, anybody that's homesteading always add to adding to your information but this book is beautiful and I think she said you can get it um, and she said don't quote me on this uh, it was Canadian Tire and Home Hardware and I do remember s standing in a lineup looking at their books things and at the time I you know um, can afford it but apparently somebody loves me <laughs> and very much and knows me and sent this to me and I'm forever grateful um, it's nice that they did it I love that they did it actually um, but I would go up there again even though it's an eight eight and a half hour drive I would go up there again in a heartbeat to watch that person's homestead because it was so peaceful 
and I knew it was like the only way they were going to be able to get away to a very important family reunion. Like it was basically a once in a lifetime reunion that also involved my parents as part of it. And we had gone up there before and tested it out. We went up the second time we took our little dog and that worked out really well. Um, and it was just, oh, it was the best vacation ever. <laughs> And I didn't leave Ontario, <laughs> even though, you know, there's lots to love in Ontario. There's lots to love in Canada and I'm sure other parts of the world too. And I, my mind just goes thinking of all of the things that I can see and I know where I would be. It would be foraging and then I wouldn't be able to bring any of it back on the plane. Um, yeah. But this book. Edible and Medicinal Plants of Canada. It's amazing. Oh, they actually do. Oh, I hadn't even noticed this. A pictorial guide. Uh, so if you wouldn't even have a clue, of course not. If you see a new plant, you're like, what the heck is this? So you can browse through their little thumbnails that they have. And, and it's not in... Uh, alphabetical order it's uh, I'm not sure how they have done this okay they've done it in categories of berries and stuff okay I can see that now from what, what we're looking at and freeze and stuff oh this is amazing because at a quick glance you can see see it you'll see the leaves you'll see any of the like the aerial parts like the flowers if it's flowering and it'll give you the name and it'll give you the page to it uh, oh well, i remember when i was looking at this it was like the pictures are so close up and vibrant like you and again again these sections are your most important parts in any book when they do this this is your summary that's a warning page um like a little blurb warning there's quite a few warnings um, they basically it's food medicine other uses descriptions are you know their categories that like a warning um, they I love well these books too they'll say like the Lewis mock orange I've heard of it I I don't think I've ever seen it um, and it gives you some other information you need to know like it's the hydrangea family. So if, it's important to know because if you have an allergy, say in the hydrangea family that you've discovered, then you can look that up and see what's all are in that family. And then you know you can stay away from it, right? But it is very important to know the name of, you know, what you're foraging, what the family that, um, from and what it produces. Too. Like some people, for instance, are allergic to latex. And it's important to know what plants have latex in it, right? So if you're producing anything for it, you know, like tinctures or bombs, uh, it's good to, you know, have that uh, so that people know when they just don't, oh, well, this, this looks good. I've heard it's good. And, and they take it. And because they're allergic to latex and they don't see that latex warning on there or may contain latex, they're unaware, right? So those little details are important um, for others and for yourself. And I also like to know because of um, a big thing for me, because I'm back into poultry, is um, your livestock. Like this one here is a button bush. Uh, again, it, it's really pretty. Oh my gosh, it's like perfectly round. That's that's cool with all these little spikes. And the warning on it is foliage is poisonous to livestock. So that's good to know, especially if you're homesteading and you have an area that might have it. Um, and even if you get rid of it there, it probably come up. So, you know, have your livestock graze in another area. Or when you're removing leaves off of something, um, 
know what you can feed to your poultry. For me, I'm constantly checking. I know the number one thing, I believe it is beans. Um, I still question it and I, you know, I always check before and it's like, okay, I know I'm not going to do that. Right. But I'm truly thinking I'm going to put a, uh, like a thing on the door. Cause sometimes we have people come and feed our chickens for us, uh, for way overnight or two and post a little note there. Um, do not feed and then it would be that because you know think oh this is great we just have some beans we have some leftovers we'll treat them and they're not gonna know you know um i'm still really new to all the nuances because before all i ever really fed them was um, stuff i saw um, my parents feed on the farm and you know different things like tomatoes and tops of different things but we were under the guidance of our parents right so build on your knowledge Gifts are wonderful. These are truly treasured. I have very few books, but they're very good books. And I knew from everything that I, you know, kind of glanced through, um, that th these ones be most important. Also, size does matter. This book is that big, right? It's a hefty little book. It's thick. It's weighty. But this is a book I would keep in my car. It would travel with me. Uh, I may look for one that's a little bit smaller, but I'm not sure. Um, I do like to well love my books. I also encourage, highly recommend and encourage, write in your books. Please write in your books. They are meant to be used. It was We actually had a class in nursing school, well, before we got into nursing school, of what you can do with your books. And that was the number one thing they asked, do you guys write in your books? And we, most of us put up our hands, we did not write in our books. And the reason for it was because, you know, you had taken them out of the library. They weren't books that you kept. But even with your, whatever books you have that you refer back to, you will refer back to it more and appreciate that book. When you add valuable information, there's always blank spots in books, right? Highlight, highly encourage, highlight. Because when you're in a, you know, flip it through and you're on the road and you, you know, you found something, You'll glance in, you'll go right to the pertinent information, and you'll go, oh shoot, you know, I can't harvest that now. I gotta do that later. Um, you know, key points, especially if it's identifying um, that plant, because quite often the plant that you can use medicinally is close quarters with one that's poisonous. And I've, or poisonous or, I shouldn't say poisonous. Um, quite often, it's a look-alike, and it could be totally benign, which means you know it's not going to harm you if you consume it. Um, but it does that to hide, and I think it's because a lot of times that plant that you want, I discovered it here in Dufferin County in Ontario. Wild lettuce likes to hide with sow thistle, and sow thistle is uh, very prevalent, and there's a lot of it around, and the Wild lettuce will hide in with it, and there'll only be a few plants of that wild lettuce, and you'll see everywhere sow thistle, right? So it's almost like a protective feature. I don't, I could be totally wrong. That's just my take on it. And once I, my eye was trained to that, I could spot it like 50 yards away, basically, um, over the other. And you will find that as you go along with your different foraging, uh, you'll know by your tree type, everything, the more knowledge that you build on for each plant, uh, the quicker you'll be able to identify it, to speak up about it, you won't hesitate, you'll know that your knowledge is in fact, a lot of my knowledge isn't in fact, and I'm gonna be upfront about it, right? Um, as, as a retired nurse and during my nursing career, you went in, you did your meds, you check them, you check them, you do seven times. I basically did it 10, 11, because you also, like you do it in the med room, you're, you know, the dosage to everything to do it for this person, you go back through, um, and you know, 
uh, until it's tried and true and you've done it thousands and thousands and thousands of times, like literally tens of thousands of times per every med, you will kind of self-doubt yourself and crack open. There's a book there, very concise, beautiful, like these books. Um, the med books are amazing and you will go through and see that information and give you what you need to know to go, okay, this is the facts. Yep. And then you go in and you check with the person, you know what that person's allergies are and did it that because you're following orders, right? With that. Uh, but for yourself and with foraging, start with yourself and then somebody else in your life, find out what their, you know, their allergies are kind of work around it find out um you know they're different types like if they're a hot personality or a cool personality dry um well and body type uh dry or moist um and it's something i've been working on and i need to develop my information on that uh yeah and then know what works for me tea wise and you know the leaves that I forage and what I focus on so uh, I've uncovered like another whole layer of information that I use for myself okay um, yeah a nice you know it's something that is truly a blessing in homesteading day-to-day um, -day use of uh, homesteading is everywhere you can you know you kind of think of the mindset homesteading means all these different things even if you start with one thing and if you're in a city or a town and you're foraging get yourself a really good book uh, if you can't afford it go to the library research them um, check online something physical in your hands though is wonderful I do like to google a lot of things but that's not always available to me uh, when I need it out somewhere and to be able to have the plant in your hand and actually reference it right against a picture is amazing. So, thank you very much for the Cindy Squirrel off grid that I went and with the hubby and the dog and homestead sat. <laughs> and had a great vacation. I never felt so relaxed in years, even though there was, you know, bears in the woods, which we didn't see, but they're there, uh, and different things like that that you're aware of. It just brought it more real of being back to nature and to look around you and appreciate the bounty that is truly out there and it's right at your fingertips it's right at your footsteps like a reaching for it or reaching down for it and hey foraging can not only be great for you and so on so many different levels of using firing off different parts of your brain helping your health putting aside teas you know for your for the winter again you know it, where, no matter where you live, if you live in, you know, in a town or city and you go out and you're out in the country, you take those drives and you start teaching yourself, you know, one thing at a time and building your skills, see if you like it, um, see if it works for you. I'm talking about the, part, the parts of the plants that you're harvesting, right? And it's just such an amazing thing. I find it really grounds me. I like to do a lot of grounding when I get wound up and anxious <laughs> and some days that's you know unavoidable considering what's going on um, in the world today go out for your walk and take in what is around you and start questioning your where what why who you know all your W's uh, how does that work why is it there what will it do for me you know start asking those questions the best teacher in the world is yourself and be proactive on it and nobody is ever a thousand percent an expert on anything they are always 
learning too. And, you know, take that into consideration. Just, you know, Google can steer you wrong sometimes. Um, some people, you know, interpret things not quite correct, but find your credible sources. Uh, check out the reviews on them as well and get out there and forage one thing at a time and build on that and you'll be amazed at what that will do for your life love you guys lots talk to you later